we have a very interesting uh, topic. It is true false. It's possible to be too blessed to be stressed. Now, I tried to look up the origins and I was able to find some of the origins of um, this idea, I guess, an idea of uh, being too blessed to be stressed. Um, and what I was really able to find is that it's it's at its basic core it is just catchy it, it is catchy and so when uh, po I actually polled some people I polled them uh, and then I read some other polls and the only response that I was able to receive as far as that goes, was people had to make up their own interpretation of what that means. Now, here's the issue. The word blessed is, has become an, an, sort of an, an ambiguous term. Uh, I know that the American Evangelicals and Baptists uh, kind of appropriated it uh, from the Bible and applied it to, uh, to anything positive that happens in their, in their lives. Um, worst of all, however, and, this, and I'm speaking directly of, of a certain uh, type, type of Baptist, um, the Amer American Evangelical, the whole umbrella, and then Prosperity Gospel, of course, uh, that they took it and ran with it. You know that that everything good that happens to you uh, is a blessing, which we all know that waters can be stagnant. And all blessings all the time is just not reality. Um, and that hardships come. You know, hardships come to us. And, uh, and when it comes time for actually understanding blessings, when everything is a blessing, nothing is a blessing. So when it's doing it says I'm too blessed to be stressed, really what it means is that I've been giving what what I think of my own my own my, my own mind as if I were writing this as one of the pollers that people that I polled. It means to me in my own mind that I have been given an overabundance of favor from God to where I don't have any real tangible reason to be upset or complain. Um, which King David, uh, the psalmist, would very much disagree with. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. True or false? Too blessed to be stressed. Before we get to the polling, I want uh, I'm going to get to the Scripture that everyone is going to want to know. Everyone's going to want to ask and, and to know about. And that is in Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to read all of the context so that, so that we have it. Um, one second here. This, of course... Uh, is still on the Sermon on the Mount. So we, from the Sermon on the Mount, we have uh, the understanding of things that have, are being taught. The Beatitudes, that is, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, uh, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart. Uh, 
uh, etc. Basically turning everything on its side, on its ear. Um, those who believe themselves to be, uh, to be rich, blessed are the poor. Uh, when you desire to be strong, blessed are the meek. So you see Christ showing that. And then, this, of course, the salt and light. Uh, Christ coming to fulfill the law, his sermon against anger, his sermon against lust, um, his words on divorce, uh, uh, on oaths or vows, which should follow, of course, uh, or, or be connected directly with divorce, uh, retaliation, um, love for our enemies, giving to the needy, and then comes the Lord's Prayer. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we also have forgiven our trespassers. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Then we go from there to the laying up treasures in heaven. Um, do not lay up treasures on earth where moths and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither wrath nor, wrath, moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Uh, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we have two things here. We have the Lord's Prayer um, telling us, well, well, before the Lord's Prayer, leading up to the Lord's Prayer, telling us that we are not to be showy in our, uh, uh, pi basically, pietism. We are, we are not, we, we are to be pious without being pietistic, showing others how, how wonderful we are and how blessed we are, etc. Instead, pray for these things. Give thanks for the Father who is in heaven. Um, uh, may his name be hallowed and may we keep it sacred by going and gladly hearing and learning it. Uh, our kingdom, uh, your kingdom come, uh, that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Thy will be done. Um, on earth as it is in heaven. And there, and right there, we, we kind of start to see that, that, that bridge gap. Um, thy will be done. And we can go all the way back to our understanding of the Hebrew word for uh, likeness or image, me actually meaning will, not that God has ten fingers, ten toes, uh, etc., though that is important. Um, uh, in particularly in uh, Christ's form and then Christ in flesh, uh, but rather our will was God's will and God's will was our will, um, and that's what we desired. So this is pre-fall. So post-fall and in particular post-crucifixion resurrection, when we talk about will, we want to be placed back into the garden. Uh, where our will is God's will and God's will is our will instead of the state in which we uh, are as sinners. Our will is our will and God's will remains God's will. And we prefer ours over his. And so we pray that our will would be his will. And then it comes to the earth, finally the, the earthly asking. 
for something. Daily bread. And of course, this is both Eucharistic and uh, uh, si sincerely give uh, what we need to preserve this uh, uh, body and life. Daily preserve this body and life. Then we come to laying up treasures in heaven. Laying up treasures in heaven uh, of, of shows that the things on this earth will decay. The things on this earth are not uh, are, are, are not meant to be eternal, uh, except for those in whom have been regenerated and those who uh, receive the, the food of regeneration and the washing of regeneration. Uh, and, and, and those things, make sure that, that you lay your heart uh, upon the altar. Make sure you lay your heart uh, upon uh, in God's word. Make sure you lay your heart upon Christ, him crucified and resurrected. Um, and not put your heart in things of this world. Um, in blessings that, 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 that may flow down. Um, because when we use the word blessed in this blessed in the term too blessed to be stressed, we miss the forest for the, for the trees. Uh, and that is, it goes against this. Now, finally we're getting to the point, and I'm going to try to make this a shorter video. Uh, when I say shorter, I mean shorter than 45 minutes at least. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body or what you will put on. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to his life, to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious. What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is tomorrow's trouble." Now, here, you, if, if you're kind of seeing mixed signals uh, between that chunk of text and too blessed to be stressed, it's because of the ambiguity that we've applied to the word blessed. Uh, blessed meaning um, things are going all right in my life. All right? I... Uh, I, I uh, got that new, I got that new uh, car, I got that new, um, uh, that, that, that new boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, whatever the, these, these material things are. Apple products, uh, which it, I bring that up for a reason, you know, phones, um, and it'll, it'll come back here in just a second. All of these things, look at all the blessings, all the outward blessings uh, that, that, that we receive from God and we make very little of going to church and seeing how eating his flesh and drinking his blood blesses, uh, blesses us in the forgiveness of sins. The most important. Everything else is the, is the treasure uh, of the world. But the eating and drinking of his body and blood and the hearing of his, of his preached word on Sunday, that's the blessing uh, of the forgiveness of sins. That's the blessing that Jacob held on to um, the angel uh, saying, I will not let go of you until you bless me. Um, that's, that's the type of blessing that we're talking about. We're not talking about, uh, well, I'll get to the pulp here in just one second. So 
when it says too blessed to be stressed, the, the to be stressed doesn't mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's not agreeing with to not be anxious. Do not be anxious for the things that you need, particularly for salvation and for the things that you need in this world. It doesn't include necessarily do not do not be anxious. It, it, it assumes do not be anxious about the things that don't matter. In fact, so far removed are the things that don't matter that the things like food and clothing that actually do matter, God will take care of the will, will definitely take care of them just as He has the grass and the lilies of the field. How much more then will he take care of you with the things that actually you actually need, like food and clothing? Furthermore, how much more will he take care of you in your salvation by sending the very one who says these words, Christ Jesus our Lord? All right, so let's get to the poll real quick so we can decide whether or not um, too blessed to be stressed is true or false. Here's the poll. Simple question. What does too blessed to be stressed mean? Uh, to be specific, it is he, she trying to stay blessed. There is nothing. So, is it he, she trying to, uh, trying to say too blessed? Whoa. Is it he or she trying to say they mean to be blessed? There is nothing to be stressed. Okay. So the question is, what does too blessed to be stressed mean? Here's, here's the answer that, uh, that was voted the, the, the most accurate. Too blessed to be stressed means that you are well enough, well off enough in life that you shouldn't be worrying about trivial matters. It is a way of looking at your life from a macro perspective. Macro means the wide view, not the small view. Macro versus micro. From the macro perspective and remembering to be thankful for what you have. For example, if you drop your smartphone on the ground and the screen breaks, that'd be a bummer. But it's not worth wasting your mental and emotional energy actually stressing about it. If your biggest worry in life is that your smartphone screen is broke and not say whether you'll have anywhere to sleep tonight or where your next meal is going to from, then you are too blessed to be stressed. While blessed typically has religious connotation, it doesn't necessarily carry any such connotation in the phrase too blessed to be stressed. You may just as well hear the phrase from an atheist as a deeply religious person. The phrase is just a way to generally relate to a particular attitude towards life that some people have where they try not to get upset about little things. That was the winner! That was the winner. No. But an atheist can't say this because b words have meaning. B to be blessed means God's countenance is upon you. He's looking upon you. And what he sees is his son dying, rising, and baptizing you. And so he sees his baptized child. That was, that's what it means to be blessed. So... It doesn't mean that you can't worry about things of this life. As Lutherans, we understand that we have the theology of the cross. That in this life, we will suffer. Christ tells you that the world will hate you because of me. They hated me first. Um, that that, that uh, I mean, look, Every apostle was martyred except for St. John. And when I say martyred, I mean killed in gruesome, horrible ways. Um and by the way, that, I'm going to be connecting Hans Feeney's thing to this uh, uh, video on, on, on martyrs, Joel Osteen, the martyrs reading Joel Osteen quotes, and this is one of them. Um, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't mean that 
that you shouldn't, that you're not going to suffer. It doesn't mean that. Being blessed does not mean that you're not going to suffer. In fact, it would be the opposite. The fact that Christ has claimed you as his own means the world has disowned you and will hate you for the, for the fact that, that, that the prince of this world uh, has lost you and the prince uh, of peace has, has gained you, has brought you into himself. And so the fact that, that, that the world shows uh, it rages against you is something that you can be stressed about. But you find comfort in blessing, which is why we have to define the term blessing correctly. Blessing is that Christ in his uh, incarnation, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, um, and, and baptism unto you, and in the uh, coming to eat uh, of, his, of his body and drink of his blood, uh, in, in that we have blessing, the forgiveness of sins, and of course, um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Sending the congregation away into the world to suffer the theology of the cross with the blessing of God. Not that bad things won't happen, but that nothing in this world that can happen to you can separate you from the love that is in Christ Jesus. Just as Luther said, you can take my head, I have a God who will give me a new one. Too blessed to be stressed is not only false, it's stupid. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Do not be anxious about what you, you will wear or what you will eat. Do not uh, lay up things, uh, treasures in, in this world, but rather in heaven. For where your heart is there, for, for your, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So make sure that you receive Christ in every means of grace that your heart which belongs to him, is your treasure. That, that, that he is the treasure of your heart, I, sh I should say. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.